Welcome to this month's lesson on Inspired to Paint. I am really excited about this one. Um, we're going to paint sunflowers, and I know we've done sunflowers before, but uh, my goal with this one is to do the different color um, sunflowers. I've got uh, several of the real pale, pale yellow sunflowers, some traditional orangey yellow sunflowers, and a wonderful, really um, dark, like burnt alizarin orange uh, color sunflower. Those ones I grow are called Autumn Beauty. If you go to the seed store um, in the spring, those ones that are multicolored are called Autumn Beauty. Um, and I think the yellow ones are like lemon, sunflower lemon, I can't remember. But um, my goal with this one is going to show you how to do a much more involved painting. Uh, there's definitely not going to be done in one day. I'm probably going to get a really good block in and maybe some detail in, in the sunflowers today. And then I'll come back tomorrow uh, and, and finish it. The sunflowers tend to stay um, fairly good for quite a while as long as they have fresh water in, in the vase. The problem with it is that sometimes the leaf will droop or the sunflower will change positions. And I have set this up specifically um, where this area here is going to be the focal point. And I wanted this dark, dark, um, kind of burgundy, warm burgundy sunflower against the pale yellow, which I think is going to be spectacular. Um, but I don't have like orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow in the composition. I've grouped my, my cool yellows, these pale yellows together. I've got a grouping of the more orangey yellow sunflowers. Um, and, and, and so it's, there's this rhythm within the composition that I've talked about before when we did our composition concept lesson. There's a rhythm um, to this movement and it's not just staccato. I've also added uh, green apples. And I, <laughs> I have to tell you, so these are the apples from my tree. I have a green apple tree, but the uh, grasshoppers this year are horrendous and they literally stripped my apple tree. Um, I'm hoping it survives. It may, it may not. But so I went and bought uh, apples from the store and then I just picked some leaves off of my tree to put it in there. So there's, it felt a little bit more like, you know, this was organically grown and not just stiff you know, grocery store products. Um, I have some um, very dark blue grapes here. Um, I could definitely do the red violet grapes, I think would really be pretty. But I, th um, so here's my thought process of why I decided not to do these. With this red violet against the green, that's your, the blue green, you're now, you know, talking definite complements. And so that, when you have complements next to each other, it draws a lot of attention. And I don't want the grapes to be, um, have a lot of attention in this, pa this painting. So the fact that I grabbed the blue or the dark blue grapes, they're kind of a blue black grapes, which kind of mimics the color of this particular vase, they're going to be much quieter in this painting. So that's why I decided to choose this color grape as opposed to the red violet grapes. Um, this vase I bought at a museum store. It's a Chinese wine jar. It's got this beautiful um, carved, you know, bird in it. So I think this is just going to make a beautiful painting. I'm really excited about it. I'm going to try and slow down for you in the beginning because I know sometimes I paint a little fast in the beginning, but I'm, I'm going to try and slow down. Um, oh, I also put in the, the brass vase in the back. Um, I'm definitely going to, you know, I'm bringing you into the painting this way. And you're going to be pow, and it's come, going to come back around here, and maybe a couple little grapes or a couple little petals will swing you back around. So I have this, you know, beautiful S kind of sideways S that's coming in as far as composition. So my canvas is a 24 by 24. I think this is the um, the C15. It's a little more textural than the C12. Um, but I don't mind that. And I've toned it with raw umber and Neil McGilp a couple days ago, so it's totally dry now. So I think this is going to be really fun. And let's hope it turns out. Let me go over my palette with you. I have my regular palette, um, but titanium white. This is Cad Lemon. 
This is cad yellow medium in gamblin. Um, it would be cad, probably just cadmium yellow pale in Windsor Newton, but you can see I have a cool yellow and a warm yellow. I have cadmium orange. If you're using um, Windsor Newton, I would use cad yellow deep. It's just a regular cad red. I've got my yellow ochre, raw umber, my transparent oxide red or transparent earth red, depending on what brand you use, alizarin, I've got French ultramarine, this is thalo green, viridian, and ivory black, and um, I have gamsol for my solvent. I'm going to put out some neoma gilp for my medium, and I actually splurged on myself and got some new brushes. So, so I did take a photograph for you guys, a photo that I have up on my monitor. Um, when I took the photo, that um, deep, deep uh, burgundy sunflower was positioned just right over that pale yellow one. And now, as I'm looking at it, the pale yellow one has kind of slipped a little bit in the setup. And this is, you know, this is the, the problem with painting from life. You get it just the way you want it, and then the flowers tend to move on you. Um, but I'll probably go back and just refer to the photo as I paint that grouping because that's that was exactly the way I wanted it in the photo. I also am going to say I'm probably not going to do a concept lesson this month because I think this is going to be a really long lesson. Um, we'll break it up in stages, but I'm going to go over a lot of stuff in this lesson. So um, I'm going to forego the concept lesson this, this month and just include it, my concept. The, the concepts that I want to cover in the full length lesson. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how I'm going to put it on uh, the canvas. I got to find my boundaries. Um, let's see. What so what color do I want to use? I think I'll probably just use transparent oxide. Maybe a little bit of yellow. I'm going to thin it down. We'll just get a, a kind of a deep orange. And so, you know, the top of that one sunflower is going to be about here. The, the, the grouping of sunflowers is about, if I were, to, again, if I were to do my tic-tac-toe, I'm just eyeballing it. Let's see, that might be a little lower, right about there. The um, sunflowers are going to encompass, like, the upper third um, of the canvas here. I do have the vase pretty much in the middle. The bottom of the vase is going to be about right here. I've got grapes that come here. i got an apple. So this is just, let's see, where's this is about middle right here. Just eyeballing things right now. Let's see, we've got, we have a, a apple that kind of comes over, barely touches the edge of the, it's so over just a little bit. We've got the brass, another apple, some grapes. Love these little leaves that come down. Do I have, I might have it up down a little too far. Let's raise that up just a little bit. And I'm looking down on it, so the bottom of the vase is going to be slightly elliptical. The bottom of the apple is going to be about right there. That leaf, in fact, let's pick up some umber, just using Gamsol. If I can get those shadow shapes, you know, I know we have, we did a lesson on um, shadow shapes. Let's see. Let's just go ahead and I'm just going to mass in. I'm just using straight umber. And it's very thin, so anything that I do um, right now, um, is easily fixable if it's wrong. Okay, so the little bowl, I'm going to say Vertically, it lines up about right there with the edge uh, in relationship to the vase, and it comes over about this far here. So that's the width 
of my little blue and white vase. The um, front lip is slightly in higher than the bottom of the vase, so there's the front lip. The back lip obviously is a little bit higher, so I'm just going to connect those. And the bottom of the vase is slightly below the edge of the vase, the bottom of the vase, so there's, there's the bottom of my little blue and white vessel. And our grapes, I love it when I put something in front of an ellipse so I can hide. So all of these are going to be grapes. We're going to make a really beautiful shape right there. That other apple is about right, right here. I have to, I'm going to, when I do this bowl, this brass bowl, it's very shallow, so there's a little, it's concave a little bit right here, but I have to make it feel like it goes all the way behind that vase. Let's go ahead and put some dark here just to give a where that more shadow color is. And let's see, apple. We got a leaf that comes there, there. Bottom of the apple lines up just about with the top of the grapes. This is all going to be in shadow. At half, or about a fourth of that apple is in shadow. That's going to be cool, I think. Love this stem. Love that curvature of that stem. That's so beautiful. Okay, so let me go back to my orange color, and let's see, that's the top of the vase, or top of the um, brass bowl, the top of the vase is just a little higher than that. And so I have the orange one about here, the bright yellow one. I've got one that on its side. So this is interesting. If you look at the photo, those petals from this particular uh, sunflower line kind of line up right with the edge. But it, when I'm when I'm looking at it at life, um, that sunflower may have dropped a little bit, and so those petals right now are slightly hanging over the little brass um, plate and I like that a lot better so I think that's going to be kind of cool having those yellows in front of a cool yellow in front of the warm brassy yellow so that's a comp compositional thing that changed from now um, as opposed to when I took the photo that it's actually better now this grouping right here is not as good as when I took the photo so I'm going to just kind of go back and forth So, so we have this one, the yellow one, we've got another yellow one. We've got this yellow one. Let's see if I, where does it line up? It's about, it's little, maybe a little, it's about halfway. And then this one connects and swings out. 
We got this one that's about there. We got a leaf, leaf. Love these here that are kind of in shadow. There's some very dark petals back here. Love that. And we've got a cast shadow, we've got a diagonal shadow. So let me just stand back and see if I like how that's placed on my canvas. Okay, I think this looks good enough for me to get started. The next thing I want to do is, you know, I just want to throw some color on. I just want to put some yellows, some greens, some the blue greens from the vase, just kind of wishy-washy and so that um, I get some color on there that I can work with. Some of the, sometimes some of the scariest, part, the scariest part of painting is putting that, you know, that first stroke down. So if I'm just having fun, let's start with that cooler yellow. I'm just gonna pick up cadmium lemon and I'm gonna keep it thin with Gamsol still. And I'm just going to like, here's that one, there's this one. I'm just having fun, this one. There's so many different ways that you can um, start a painting. That one. Okay, so now let's go to uh, Cad Yellow Medium. Or Cadillo Pale if you're in Windsor Newton. I'm still thinning it, thinning it down just with Gamsol. Let's see, this one's going to be right about here. You know, and just know that um, whatever you do right here, the paint's so thin that there's nothing that can't be fixed. So no reason to get um, all panicky. So this one has a little bit more of an orangier tone. Let's pick up a little bit of this, maybe even a little bit of the transparent um, earth color. And right, even this one has a little bit of an orangier tone. Um, these ones are in shadow so that we could use this. Did I, oh, I forgot this one. A little more yellow. Let me say something about your yellows on your palette, especially when we're painting sunflowers or if you were gonna paint lemons or something that has a really um, intense color, very chromatic yellow. It's, it will serve you so much better if you have a good quality, um, artist quality yellow and not the student grade. The student grades have so much filler in them that um, you're just, you're going to use more paint trying to get that, those intense bright yellows. So, you know, I know they're expensive. The cadmium yellow mediums, they can be like $30 for a little tube, but you can Michael's always have a coupon you can use. So splurge on some really good yellows. That's gonna help you um, get to where you wanna be. So now that beautiful burnt orange, I'm gonna take a Lizrin and transparent oxide red. And this is about somewhere around here. Okay, and that petal comes up out there. Oh, it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty. Okay, I let's see what else can I do. Um, well, let's take umber and yellow, kind of make a brassy color. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker, maybe a little warmer. Let's go ahead and 
mask this in. I see some beautiful green reflections in there. If I see it right away, then I'll tend to go ahead and, and put some of that in. So I see it right away without um, thinking too hard. So let's just go ahead and put some of that in. Okay, so there's that. Uh, let's get some leaves, some green leaves. So let's take Viridian. I'm just going to take Cad Yellow Medium. Maybe some umber to dull it. I could any earth tone will dull a color. I could also pick up some red if I wanted to to dull it. That actually might be, to be honest, that might be a good color for the apples. Let's see. Nope, it's too. Look, it looks really good here, but it's not good there. So let's go back to the leaves. I'm going to make a darker version. In fact, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my phthalo green. Just remember, phthalo green is really potent and viridian isn't. So let's so let's just kind of where are some of these darker greens? There's some there's a green there. Maybe a little bit lighter. But I'm gonna pick up some ochre and maybe a tiny bit of white just to cut the intensity to kill the chroma a little bit. Gray them just a little bit. There's a beautiful leaf right here. We got this big leaf. There's greenery right through here. Now if you wanted to trace all this on here and have a very distinct um, pattern, love that leaf that comes over. Um, by all means, do that. I, I don't like to do that. That feels like a prison to me. So I much prefer this where I'm, um, you know, I'm searching. Oh, isn't that, isn't that one little leaf fun? Sometimes that just happens like, oh, the still life gods were with me today. Okay, so I'm gonna just gonna add more yellow to that color for the green apples. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. I do love having those dark grapes against the lighter apple. Um, I love when I can do that, when um, I can put dark in front of light, you know, dark in front of light. It, it just feels a little bit more, like there's a little more depth. Perceptually, there isn't any more, but um, I mean, re reality, if, if I were to put the grapes right behind the apples, it wouldn't, um, as opposed to in front of them, there wouldn't technically be any more depth, but the fact that there's dark in front of light visually just feels like there's more, more light, or more depth, sorry. And this is gonna come up a little more. Okay, let's pick up, um, let's go thalo, a tiny bit of thalo and some uh, transparent oxide to warm it up and kind of to dull it down. So it needs, gosh, that phthalo is so strong. Maybe even a little bit more. Keep it thin here. Okay, a little bit more viridian. Um, phthalo green, actually, if I were to do this, phthalo green is, um, I think, a little warmer, leans a little bit more to the yellow, where viridian leans a little bit more to the blue. 
So if I was going to be following the color wheel, so blue, blue, green, like a blue, yellow, yellow. When I mask this in, a little bit darker down here. When I mask this in, I'm 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 purposely going to um, keep it darker here so that I can build up the lights. But let's see where we're at. Let's take Viridian White. Let's add a little bit of ochre to warm it up and just kind of dull it down a little bit to start off with. Okay, that feels ugh, it's it's very. Uh, it's like too much sugar. <laughs> so I'm going to dull it down even more. I could pick up one of these or I could pick up a lizard and that would that would do it for me. Let's get a little bit darker. So that starting off dar dark like that gives me the ability to work up the lights. I would rather start too dark than start too light unless I'm trying to do a high key painting but this is not going to be this is not a high key painting. Okay, so that comes that apple comes there. We see a little bit of the vessel. Very dark, cast shadow, beautiful, beautiful little cast shadow right here that I'm just... Okay. All right, then we have our grapes. And I'm just going to take black and maybe a tiny bit of blue because I'm I don't want I'm going to keep these fairly very quiet just creating a beautiful shape a little one right there Maybe we'll put one over there. I don't know. I'm going to go back to my dark, my just raw umber. And there's a beautiful, we've got a cast shadow all through here. So let's just go ahead and get that dark. is dark. I'm not raw umber is not going to be my background color, but value wise I'm getting closer to what I want to be. I am going to do that greenish um, color background. If you notice on my setup I'm dealing with um, orange, yellow, green, and blue. So four colors that, if you look at the color wheel, um, orange, yellow, yellowy green, and well, and, and a blue green. So we've got the four that are right next to each other on the color wheel is my, is my color harmony. 